If you want to win more games, do more damage, and successfully carry more games, then this video is going to outline some of the best tips that can allow you to do it in some of the more fast vehicles within World of Tanks. So stay tuned, because this video is going to show some of the best gameplay that we can both learn from. So with the intro out of the way, I want to start on one of the best replays in a tank that is not overpowered, and in fact you have to play very well to have games that we're going to see like today, and of course we have those three three replays that I want to showcase and hopefully we can all learn something and improve our own gameplay with this review and of course have a looking at some of these gameplays. Now we are looking at the Centurion 7 slash 1 which is a tank that features a standard gun that is a capable of dealing 390 but it also has those Hesh rounds that are able to do 480 damage and on these Hesh rounds you do get pretty decent penetration 210 millimeters which is capable of ripping apart some of those lightly armored vehicles to have ridiculous games where you can boost the damage per minute of a tank like this to have crazy high damage per minute but it takes some getting used to and certainly firing hesh rounds can be a little bit of a troll sometimes and you can end up doing less damage than maybe you'd hope to but in this game we're going to see how you can have a brilliant game on cliff which a lot of people really struggle with this map to have those super high impact games because of the fact that it is quite a small map that really focuses on you playing to the utmost ability and using all of the positions that you know within the game to have crazy results so straight off the bat you saw him go for the blind fire at the t54 who was crossing up into the top of the hill you've also seen him get a few easy shots at the beginning on players that were advancing towards the middle here which is something you can do in your slightly fast vehicles which is of course what medium tanks are all about they're about getting into position early getting those free shots of damage on slow tanks and heavy tanks that might be pulling into a position in the early game and that is where you can get that easy damage at the beginning of the game to really boost up your potential within world of tanks and that is what we've seen 1400 damage so far but let's have a look at how he develops this game in the more stale mount that you actually see within cliff itself now what's great about this replay is that this match is already looking like it isn't going to end up all too well for the centurions team and that is because not only have the enemy team seen somewhat taken the middle of the map they've got a, a medium slash light tank on the hill who you know there may other be other people trying to cross up there but they've also got players behind him in the Shah future and the progetto who can be a real nuisance from this position they can spot your teammates on the hill who's up there the leopard one and of course they can deal a ton of damage so if you're on the opposite side and you can get into a position like the enemy team have in this game you really do increase the chances of you winning on cliff but but because the Centurion is not a bot and he knows exactly the sorts of plays you have to do and the position that you have to take when someone gets into this location here which is essentially get into this position here where essentially not only are the enemy team having to either poke up here to get damage onto the back of you if they are going to attempt it but also the people in front of you don't get an easy shot now the one negative of this position that you'll see is that the enemy team can of course hit you from the this location in the base but it does rely on them actually looking at you and it also relies on them pushing forward enough to be able to uh, be able to be within your view range which a lot of the time the tank destroyers and players here won't be able to do and it also protects you from the camping hill as I'm sure we all know on cliff is an absolute nightmare so when you try and push this side up here where you just saw him poke the tank destroyers will be looking at you instantly so this is a position that is very very much a you have to play it exactly right otherwise you'll be ending back in the garage much much quicker than you'd hope for now then he has utilized those hesh rounds which of course start off with a 501 damage roll and so when you have these the ability to deal such damage then you really want to take advantage of it and that is where your thought process as to what tank am i focusing on what is the weak point of the vehicles i'm 
I'm going to be fighting against. Am I going to be able to pen them with the Hesh rounds? Am I going to be able to pen them with HG? Regardless of what tank you're playing, you should always keep that in the back of your mind because if you can do an extra 20, an extra 50, an extra 100 damage dependent on the round, you can quite easily uh, impact the game a lot more and just those small amounts of damage can lead to a much bigger result. You can take the opponents out quicker and you can end up dealing a lot more damage overall because you might survive longer, you might take a tank out quicker it might not cost you another shot to be able to take a tank out because you've dealt more damage in every shell and that means that you are just going to be a lot more dominant now What's great about this game is that he has really shut down those people that were camping on the corner behind. Things like the Object 704, uh, Object 752 uh, even, and of course uh, some of the other vehicles that were sat on that corner. Which is a brilliant idea, you really need to get those out because they can get side shots on you. And that allows you to then cross up to the hill with only really exposing yourself to the tank destroyers as you get past the point uh, where essentially you will potentially get hit where the AMX 1390 on the tank actually ended up dying. Now, what the hill is great for is exactly this. It's the mid game and late game scenario where a uh, essentially what's happened is the enemy team have really tried to push uh, and of course they've failed their way or at least they really haven't got the that much control in the center of the map which allows you to push forward and start getting that extra bit of damage and of course when you find your enemy team actually still sat in the base things like the gorilla 15 you can get free shots of damage into them and also you can then push off of the hill if you feel like it's not going entirely right and you can support your team by coming up from behind of the enemy that may be still in this location things like the TVP now he gets shut down it doesn't really matter but it's all about that thought process and the potential that you could have taken the TVP out as well as some of the other vehicles that might be around here and rather than sitting on and resting on his laurels he decides to actually push this Jagdpanzer E100 who's really starting to trouble his teammate in uh, the 907 and what this does is it allows them to get a amazing crossfire he's able to deal shots to the Jagdpanzer and now he's going to have team support from of course the 907 over here and what they can do is the centurion can use the hold down position use the turret armor of the tank and use the accuracy to pinpoint those weak points which is on the Jaeguru pretty much most places to be honest with you and of course the Coppola being the key point at which he's going to be able to pen now with the good turret armor that the Centurion actually gets, and in a lot of the mediums you'll find nowadays, they actually have decent turrets, whereby you can bounce shots from TDs. Now, am I going to say you can bounce heat rounds from a Jaeger every single time? Absolutely not. But if they're not aiming 100%, like you saw the Jagdpanzer E100 do there, just getting that flick onto the turret you can see he's just bounced off the top of this tank and that allows you to really finish him off going for that Coppola once again hopefully he can hit it doesn't manage to do it slightly unlucky of course maybe it could have aimed just that little bit more but it is a difficult shot especially when you've done as much damage as he has and I'm sure he's sweating at this point trying to get that remaining damage on him and of course with both the crossfire of the Centurion and the 907 coming at the same time the Jagdpanzer has no choice but to try and go for one of them and of course he goes for the wrong one looking at the Centurion rather than the tank that actually ends up taking him out in the 907 but he is able to hit the Gorilla 15, obviously very triggered at the fact that he got hit there by the Gorilla. Doesn't own, actually manage to deal any damage, which is, uh, yeah, I'd be fuming as well. But he does manage to find the 268 V4. The V4 is just an utter to shambles of a tank, to be honest with you. Of course, with that big Coppola uh, that is basically unpenable, even when you are fully aiming, you can often miss it and you really have to hit the center of the 268. But because he's now above the 268, he can use those standard rounds to go through the upper plate and deal with that damage. But there is still a few tanks left alive, including the Shah Future. And when he's done 9,500 damage, it really is about trying to get as much damage now at the end of the game, where his team have essentially won to boost up the damage, bouncing off of the 50 and his backside. Yeah, very, very annoying indeed. But he sees that the Shah Future on the enemy team is in the base, or at least has dropped down where he saw him earlier in the game. And he just YOLO straight for that position. Hopefully he can get the damage and end up trying to win. Uh, and of course, 
get some extra damage where he can boost over that 10k mark and it's about the knowledge of thinking ahead where you know maybe a tank isn't that dominant at this point in the game but remembering where they are and of course using the minimap which uh, apparently none of his team decided to do and he is going to try and go for this Shah Futura. He does get the gun depression to be able to hit him. The Shah looks like he may have even just left the game at this point. No he is still there. His turret's moving. He is in a bit of a terrible spot. He hits him again dealing over over 10,000 damage, 10,465, and rather than just YOLOing in to try and get the shot, he gets that last remaining hit there and finishes him off, unfortunately, ending up actually taking himself out, which is apparently the only thing that could take him out in this game. But yeah, a fantastic result, picking up nearly 10,500 damage in a tier 9 medium in a tier 10 game. Now this next game, we are going to see something just as good as the first one, but something a little bit different, which is of course playing in the KPZ-50T where you're going to see him get into an early position. Like I say, getting into an early position in the mediums like the first game is one of the crucial things that you can do and it is the main reason why a lot of players end up dealing no damage or very little damage compared to the rest of those high win rate players on their team. And I'm hopefully going to be able to show you how you can do it too. And it's mainly by using your tank strengths and weaknesses. Uh, against the opponents and of course making sure that you don't use those weaknesses in the wrong sort of area or uh, expose your weakness to the enemy team. Now what he does here is a perfect play. You can see him pushing up trying to get into a position to help out his teammate who decided to YOLO in. Now you don't want to be a YOLO wagon in this game and in fact what you want to do is make sure that you can get into somewhere like here where you can face a tank one on one which is going to have a bit of a problem to really be dealing damage. Now the reason why you're seeing him actually go for the T10 here is not because the T10 is the biggest threat in terms of the tanks on this flank but it is because of the position that the T10 is on in this game and that is the real uh, kind of thing that I wanted to show within this game is target priority and why you want to be looking at a tank like the T10 as opposed to going for something like free shots on the IS-7 who is in a, a bit of a terrible position and that is because the T10 when he's in here can get hold down he can really stop your opponents from pushing up he can get side shots on all of these tanks and if you don't push into this location here and take out that t10 quickly enough he is going to be taking out you and your teammates on this flank and of course when this is one of the biggest positions for the enemy team to really counter you uh, and your team in this flank so it's really crucial that you pushed up here and although sometimes it doesn't end up a whole lot and sometimes you can get taken and out it is uh, something that you should always be trying to do and just try and out trade the DPM of the KPZ allows you to do that along with most medium tanks you're going to have the increased damage per minute which is why you do want to push sometimes to get that extra damage and what's great about the KPZ is that it gets both APCR and heat ammunition and he's not actually had to fire a ton of premium uh, at least you know he doesn't have an inordinate amount of premium rounds in the game which is what you see a lot of players players whining about in uh, you know just general within world of tanks is that apparently loading premium rounds is the only way that a player is actually good but if you actually see through that tin four hat theory you'll actually start realizing that no the best players use premium rounds where they need to be used and yes you'll see that the top players spam nearly exclusively premium but that is because they are trying to min max the game they are trying to really do the highest amount of damage they possibly Possibly can and unfortunately premium rounds are just a little bit better in most cases sometimes they aren't especially if you're loading heat ammunition and of course you're coming up against tracks or spaced armor heat is not ideal so that's where those APCR rounds are really good and of course against lightly armored targets you don't need heat ammunition for the most part so with that out of the way and kind of the caveat of premium ammunition out of the way so we don't start talking about the only reason these players did any good was because they loaded it. Uh, yeah, we can move on with how you can use tanks like this in the game and in specific tanks with lower alpha damage because of course the first replay looked at the Centurion uh, and of course how that tank actually has that high alpha and the potential to do high alpha. Whereas this vehicle right here is all about using damage per minute and getting into aggressive positions to just badger opponents out of the game. 
So here is one of the great uh, kind of movements that he does. Rather than going straight across to try and get back uh, end shots into the IS-7, he actually goes down in the dip. Why? Well, it's these small movements that allow you to really push within the game. Uh, and it also avoids him from basically being able to be hit by the campers, like the Leopard 1 that was spotted over here, because he's now below the ridge line, and that avoids him taking any unnecessary shots. So even though... It might take you an extra, you know, half a second to get into position. You might end up saving yourself a third of your hit points, half of your hit points. And sometimes, if you don't know there's something like an FE4005 in the back, it can save you pretty much all of your hit points in the game. So just be aware when you do push, think about the sorts of positions where you might be able to get away without being hit. Now, that sounds very, very, I mean, common. It's not a brain box move, is it? But you see a lot of the standard players, players that are, you know, average players that are casual players, you know, not everyone wants to do the highest amount of damage in the game, which I completely agree with. It's down to whether or not you enjoy it. But if you are here and you're looking to try and get better, this is one thing that you should really be thinking about in all of the games because it can be the difference between between you losing half or losing no health at all. So here you see him try and push. The leopard has actually repositioned, which is a good play by him. He's gone back into these bushes over here. Unfortunately for him, though, he has been spotted. But instead of focusing the leopard, which doesn't have an autoloader, he wants to reduce the hit points of the Shah Future, since that can really pop out of nowhere and remove the majority of your hit points in one foul swoop. So you want to get any of the autoloaders out as quickly as possible in the game, even if it means not dealing damage to some pretty strong single shotguns like the Leopard 1. Now, from this position, it is the typical, you know, you've won this side. And what you'll see a lot of players and less experienced players do is they try and push immediately from this location straight across the water and into all of the campers who are going to be in the bushes. And of course, when you're in the open water, you're slowed down because it's water. And of course, you get lower uh, traverse speed when in the water. It reduces your overall speed. And so you, it's at this point that you can start moving when your team have actually pushed and you've dealt a little bit of damage to the campers and you can now surprise the leopard one as he tries to get back into his little camping spot in his base uh, and that's exactly what this KBZ has done and he gets himself into a nice secure position he could poke around and try and deal the damage but luckily what he does is he puts once again that ridge line in front of the hull armor of this tank and gets a free shot of damage whilst also bouncing around. He does pre-aim where the Leopard 1 appeared to be going. He is of course trying to come around into the middle. He thinks he has support from his teammates and that the enemy team have won in that central location so it should be a fairly easy push to come around the side and deal damage to the KPZ but of course he pre-aimed it he knew that that is most likely what the leopard was going to do so that's exactly where he aims but just watch what he does now so rather than try and push into two tier 10s that are obviously got decent damage per minute and of course could potentially out trade the kpz quite easily he decides to go and try and help out from the tanks that are located in the other side of the map because what he can do here is get shots into the side into the rear and of course in positions where the enemy team weren't expecting him to relocate backwards to be able to deal damage to so it's a really good idea to always think about is it actually worth pushing two tier tents that have got themselves into a nice defensible position or is it potentially better for me to try and help out on the other flank and support my teammates who seem to be on the failing flank and this is the real difference between a player that might be able to consistently deal a good amount of damage or might be able to feel like they have a good impact they have good aim etc but it's that repositioning and knowledge of and game knowledge as to you know what maybe I can catch people out who are in the center and in the late game you'll have super high amounts of opportunities to do this you just have to be able to know and be aware and the easiest way to do that is using your minimap so what you see here is of course he's managed to get hold down on this ridge has a little dip here which allows him to get shots into things like the uh, Emil 2 who's pushing up towards him and it also allows him to get shots into the tortoise now out of the two tanks that are pushing him the key thing to do is to try and get rid of this Emil it has annoying armor that if he gets hold down it can just be uh, one of those tanks that you can't really do a whole lot about but 
Of course, you can see now he is not able to get a shot onto the hull armor of the Emil II, so instead he's going for the tortoise's cupola. But what he does here, gets a free shot onto the lower, or the kind of lower frontal plate of the tortoise, doesn't really have a typical lower plate, and he's able to deal a bit of damage to him at the end of the game, and get that just slightly more damage, 9.6 thousand in total of course you can't win every game and i'm not trying to say that you can that's why you see even the best players in the game only end up with a 65 percent win rate you know these are the top level players even 70 percent on the highest end in world of tanks uh, because you know sometimes you do have to rely on the 14 other teammates in some situations so yeah even with some fantastic plays you can still lose a game and that's exactly what happened here but let's see how the E50, the other German tier 9 tech tree tank as opposed to the premium slash reward vehicle, whatever you want to call it, the KPZ. Uh, of course, he can get into this location right here to get some free shots. If you push hard enough and you have the speed, you can catch people out like the enemy E75 that don't quite have that speed to get down into the position. And it's often a nice defensible position that you can spot for your team and just understand what sort of opponents are going to be here. You just have to be careful of those artillery pieces like you just saw there. Now, what you're seeing here is some really good use of the HE rounds. Like we said earlier, you want to make sure you know the opponents that you're facing. And by spotting them and, of course, using the right rounds like HE, you're going to be able to increase the amount of damage you're dealing. And, in fact, he took out the Barras from the amount of hit points he had in just two shells as opposed to having to fire three on average at him. And here you go, just easy, workable, rigid lines that the E50M is able to do and he really does manage to carry at the beginning of this game to really do a ton of damage to the enemy team and this is what mediums can do they have that power to get into position early and you'll see the top heavy tanks in the game also have that ability where they have a bit of speed they have the armor to a degree and they can really start kicking out a ton of damage and the E50M is one of the best tanks you can use as a new player and a beginner player to start learning how to play World of Tanks properly. What you'll have seen here is yet well, yet again he's loaded a HE round, he goes for the speculative shot, sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't, sometimes you just have to go for them either way. But you do see there the enemy KPZ-50T and we know how strong that tank is from the previous game. But what he does is rather than trying to push the Minotauro on the southern side of the map where he was, of course, the Minotaur can get hold down and trying to push in an E50M against that vehicle, it's just not going to end up well. So instead of that, he tries to support his team who are really having trouble with the enemy team who have pushed the northern side of the map and really trying to push their base. So getting into this spot here can stop tanks from just being able to pull up and get side shots into a lot of your teammates. For example, like we're seeing here next to the cap circle. So it can just be a very good supporting role and you can get some easy shots of damage in to opponents that are going to push but you just have to be very careful that if your team do actually fail on this part of the map that they don't push around and they're going to get hold down in the dip to be able to counter you so just be aware of that and make sure that you do know where the enemy heavily uh, kind of damaged tanks are. That was a terrible explanation. A high damage tanks, things like a Yeageru or a T30 or some of the you know high penetration tanks are going to pop up where they can essentially deal damage back to you as you get into this spot. So it's just about being aware of the situation and making sure that if there are any high damage tanks that you aren't exposing yourself all too much and just making sure that they are not going to be ones that are going to be able to get hold down if not you can try and rethink your approach and see if there's any way that you can get into a position to counter them uh, from where you are right now and if you can push the south if that is the better option than to try and defend here then you've got to go with it and you've got to commit otherwise you'll end up getting a sausage sandwich by both the front and the back and we all know what being sausage sandwich from the back is always like so just be aware of that in your own games and you'll start doing tons more damage and if you really focus on looking through this gameplay hopefully it's going to be able to really help you out like it's helped me out and it's one of the best ways that i've learned world of tanks and avoided all of that mess of you know not knowing where i should be 
and not knowing the sorts of things I should be doing in the game. And hopefully that's what I'm trying to do on the channel. And if you are enjoying it, make sure that you do subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see next, any other video ideas. And I'll try my best to actually do that for you as I'm working hard on just producing as many good things for you. And if that sounds good, then of course, let me know. If you've been seeing and keeping an eye on the scoreboard, you'll see that the enemy team are up on hit points and they have really are starting to dominate this game. And you saw there his teammate in the Skoda T56 just took a big old hit. And what sort of tanks on the enemy team are capable of dealing 850 damage? Well, it's the T30s, you've got the ISU 152K, which could potentially roll for 850. So it's got to be one of those, which means that if the T30 is in the middle, if the ISU is relocated to somewhere in the middle as well, it could potentially be them. Now we knew that the T30 was on the north, so what he does is he pushes over here to try and counter the enemy tanks that might be trying to push. And there you go, the EOC Even 90 is pushing. And this is a tank you wanna get out of the game since it can be a real nuisance in this mid and late game where it just crops up and tries to deal that side shot damage with its little autoloader that can actually be quite devastating if you just leave it where it is. So he's always keeping an eye out for him and oh look the T30 pushes over here as well but a good little quick angle which you can do in tanks like this that have that kind of um, very flat armor and he essentially allows him to block the T30 shot there, hits the upper plate at an angle very easy bounce but the t the 122 tm decides to push obviously bad idea he could get the side of him easy shot right there now he has to really quickly start pushing out the damage on this t30 otherwise you're going to end up with two t30s cropping up next to each other potentially and uh, yeah it's not going to go very well but given the fact that t30 has fired you really 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 need to actually start punishing him otherwise you know that next shot it might actually pen you might end up losing a ton more hit points and it's not going to end up very well but since the eoc is still alive he goes for the blind fire you can do this in your own games it's something that sometimes will work but you do need to be a little bit careful he ends up going to try and get rid of this EOC who is going to be here somewhere along this ridge probably in one of these bushes over here if not tried to relocate somewhere else and there you go the EOC tries to run he ends up going into the open and can he get the shot yes he can good bit of aim there and ends up really securing this flank so far but there is still a T30 unknown, there's still an SU-130PM unknown, and the ISU didn't get spotted for a while until now. So, with the ISU on such little hit points, he really needs to get him out of the way because it is a one-shot guaranteed, and if he can get him out of the game, that could potentially save him a 700 damage hit, which he could receive. And that's exactly what he's going for here. He knows he's got spotted, the ISU is in a position that isn't ideal for him. He's going to have to crest if he wants to get a shot. And rather than trying to just sit here and wait, he tries to open up another shot. And opening up another shot in World of Tanks will secure you tons more damage. And there you go. A tr attempt at trying to get rid of this ISU 152. He doesn't manage to do it, but it could have gone to his favour. Unfortunately, he didn't in this game, but it's still a decent attempt. Unlike what you would typically think in terms of being on this many hit points at this stage in the game because the situation needs him to carry and because his teammates don't have particularly the most hit points he plays a little bit more passively and this is something you should be thinking about in those games where you're not sure what's going to happen in the late game and where you know that the enemy team have the hit point advantage so what does he do well he decides that he's going to try and push towards the opponents now having been a little bit more passive and taken the ISU out because if he'd taken one from the ISU it'd leave him as a one shot to both the T30 and the SU-130 PM and of course the artillery might even try to get a little RNG casino hit into the back of the E50M uh, or the E50 even which might have become a little bit of an extra problem so what does he do here rather than trying to push the T30 he's going to try and get rid of the RNG out of the game and hopefully he can find that little piggies who are going to be in the base and if he ends up managing to get a shot into the T30 it will be ideal because you know you never know but finds himself up against the Lorraine. The Lorraine actually survives because he low rolls by one damage, which is, yeah, perfect. And he doesn't manage to get the second shot. But 
rather than instantly pushing towards the Lorraine, which could open him up to the T-30, he hides behind the rock and starts aiming at this T-30 instead. T-30 whiffs a shot miles wide, and that allows him to at least know that he may take an SU-130PM shot, but it's not going to be the worst in the world. So he decides to go and try and help out the Waffle Panzer IV. He's playing Ring Around the Rosie with this T-30, and he can get into a bush to allow him to get some rear shots into the back of the turret. And there you go, a free shot of damage there to pick up 7.8 thousand damage in this game. In a game which you'd have probably, if you know you didn't know about the tips in medium tanks, would have basically not ended very well because you really needed to play this perfectly to come away with that damage. So T30, SU-130PM all on a decent chunk of hit points and given the fact that his teammate in the Skoda T56 is on basically nothing, if he can spot for his team it might end up very very well. Now the SU-130PM does something that I wasn't particularly expecting and he actually jumps into the cap circle. So what he does is, of course, he's got to go for the cap circle at this point in the game because if he doesn't get back there quick enough, they're going to lose to cap. And that is one of the worst things in World of Tanks, I'm sure you know. If you're watching this video, losing to cap is the most infuriating game, especially if you've had a game like this and you see that the enemy teammate or the enemy team and the ones that have actually ended up capping usually have like no damage and that all they've done is gone down one flank and decided to jump in the cap circle. Um, so hopefully he's able to get back to the cap so he makes that move quickly, completely disregarding the T-30 because there's no point right now. If he can get a shot on the move at him, perfect. If he can't, it's not the worst case in the world because now he knows where the SU is, he can really decide what he needs to do and even if he just can get one shot into him and then focus back on the T-30, it bides him that time to try and win the game and also his teammate in the Skoda T56 has got into a nice little uh, kind of counter to the enemy's capping because if the E50 can reset the cap on this little SU-130PM he can then end up winning the game but unfortunately T-30 pushes the, uh, the Skoda and that ends up with him feeling a little bit worse for wear back in the garage but it could have potentially come out all right especially if the T-30 went to try and support the SU but unfortunately for this SU he's realized that he isn't a medium tank and he doesn't have that damage per minute and he certainly isn't aiming 100% which is definitely what you want to be doing in this sort of clutch situation and you see there a little bit of a bad shot from the E50 but given the fact he's had a perfect game at this point I mean I can't really blame him there are certain shots that you know you will end up missing in the game and don't really think and reflect on those because sometimes it happens you know you can't play perfectly all of the time but at this point he is feeling very very happy 8.9 thousand damage done and it's time to start thinking about what next to do. Now then, with just a minute left on the clock, he decides to try and push where this T-30 is. He is, of course, in the center of the map, and considering that the T-30 is on a minuscule amount of hit points and he doesn't end want to end up actually being able to draw the game or potentially, you know, lose the game if he gets taken out. He's trying to get that damage on the T-30, but he still needs three shots, so this is going to be almost impossible unless he gets lucky on the cupola right here and oh for god's sake he manages to miss it and this is not good at all and it looks like it is going to end up in a draw even with everything that ended up in this game but the t30 was just a little bit too much for the e50 to deal with at the end of the game given the fact he had tried so hard within this game but there's only so much you can do and even if you drew this game it ends up with you getting the same amount of xp as ending up losing anyway so there's not really any point in trying to go for the draw and sometimes you just have to go for the win even if it means losing the rest of your hit points it is just one of those things you will have to try and do sometimes and especially if you're going for marks of excellence you know getting taken out and getting that one extra shot is definitely worth it rather than drawing the game unfortunately that's how it works but it does and yeah hopefully you did enjoy this video once again if you really did find it useful 
or you found it unuseful or you want to let me know how I could change these videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you actually did. And if you want to see another video that looks at some of the best tips in general for World of Tanks, then this video right here is a fantastic example of various different scenarios that will allow you to get better and learn the game more. Hopefully I'll see you there. Goodbye.